Steffi Aikens is a champion of change, sustainable project coordinator and supply chain manager, whose love for gardening taught her the value of planning, the importance of being flexible and the power of having a counter strategy. With a graduate diploma in sustainable development from HEC, she has skills in social economics and a passion for human ecology. Steffi has vast experience in facilitating and organizing workshops, meetings and events. With an unconventional profile, she proficiently navigates the transfer from B2B, B2C, contract management and multidisciplinary teamwork. So thank you for joining me uh, to get to know the formula for sustainable city and communities. Um, obviously, my name is Steffi and I'm super excited to be here with you guys. I am from Montreal and I must acknowledge that uh, Montreal is actually known as Totiake. It's located on the traditional territory of Kaniaka Nation, who is recognized as the steward of this island. Um, and the Osdenasoni Confederation, of which Kanyekena Nation is part of, is Abinashbe, and their people have this deep historical connection to this area, and it, it's really important to recognize and respect the rights, history, and culture of the indigenous people who have long-standing ties to our environment and Montreal within Quebec, that it's in the bigger country of Canada. So here's an overview of my presentation and all um, the components are basically part of the formula um, because sustainable cities and communities, they require a holistic approach to development and we need to prioritize sustainable practices, um, social economy, food security, and human ecology. And all these elements are critical to create and maintain communities that are livable and equitable and that are promoting wellness for everyone living within them. So we are witnessing a rise of uh, urban society. Um, and by that fact, uh, um, we are really uh, dependent on specific resources to sustain our life and our way of life. And that makes scarcity, scarcity a looming threat because um, the city is bleeding over rural spaces and the resources are more and more in demand, which the supply cannot uh, be increased for. Um, because the resources that we're really dependent on are food, water, shelter, and energy, to name just a few. But those are really like important key resources. Um, and when we look at history, um, when these resources become scarce, well, it can really lead to inequality, conflict, and even violence. And in addition to that, um, climate change is really exacerbating the, pro the problems of scarcity because it's really disrupting the environment, um, due to the extreme weather events, it's disrupting the supply chain and the projections, especially, let's say, from personal experience in Montreal, um, before the pandemic, um, we were, well, we are still dependent on outside import and exports, but the issue really for, let's say, medical purposes is that when the supply chain is disrupted, um, you have a hard time um, presenting and having the right uh, products for the operating rooms and it, it can be really a challenging for um, the staff at the hospitals, but also for the people that need uh, the care. So it's really um, important to think of those things. Um, the first concept that we need to take into account is really the concept of sustainable development because it ensures that growth and progress occurs in a way that does not harm the environment, deplete the natural resources um, that we're using now and potentially for a future generation. Um, it's really like a holistic approach that combines um, economic advancement, social progress, and also uh, protecting the environment and within the formula that I think that we're discussing today um, there are three aspects that are interconnected and they're really essential to balance 
an inclusive future for us and future generations. We want to be able to leave um, our lives and our place on earth for something that's possibly um, well uh, interesting to live on. Like we don't want to just take everything and not think about potentially what future issues can be um, happening. So for economic sustainability, we need to focus on prosperity and while, um, while minimizing external um, effects that are negative. So really like we need to think about, although it is counterintuitive to think about um, unintentional um, effects of what we're gonna do, um, we do need to, eat, to present what's good because we're actively doing an action but we're also needing to think about the indirect impacts that we can have on certain things um for the economy uh, we need to really focus on sustainable and social um businesses so not just to make profit but we do need to look at how is that going to impact society how is um the project business or service um, economically viable, but also what's the impact on our environment. It can be in direct or indirect impact, but we still need to process it and think about it. So by doing so, we're really investing in green technologies, we're promoting local entrepreneurship, um, we're supporting fair trade, um, and that's how like we're going to have a thriving city and the community within it. Um, secondly, um, we need to emphasize equity and uh, inclusivity and social cohesion uh, because all individuals, uh, regardless of their backgrounds or circumstances, they need to have equal opportunities for education, healthcare, and social participation. Um, and by fostering those things, we're making sure that our communities are vibrant and that there's justice for all and we're really minimizing um, issues such as uh, poverty inequality um, that can really um, threaten the social cohesion and as for the social aspect um, well it's really about social cohesion and really like making sure that everyone's included uh, not just the able bodies but really everyone so potentially all the marginalized people are included in the conversation uh, to have a thriving community another really important aspect on living in the city and its importance is the urban design so it really has a significant impact on our daily lives and it can really affect our physical health and mental well-being, as well as our quality of life. And many sh uh, studies have shown that um, there is an increased risk of mental health problems like depression, anxiety, and stress, and stress sorry, when we live in the city. Why is that? Because um, we need access to green spaces and natural environments because they're really found to, to help us reduce stress, improve mood, and um, uh, overall increase mental well-being. Um, and how can we do that really actively? It's by having parks, green roofs, um, community gardens, and uh, other potential activities to promote mental health uh, by providing people with natural spaces within the city because it really needs to be accessible. By designing well a city, we're also promoting physical activity and healthy lifestyles. And um, by having those public spaces and by supporting active lifestyles, like uh, having a really well thought of transportation system, like uh, bike sharing programs, public transit. Um, we're really encouraging people to be more active. And by doing so, by doing those things, there are positive effects, um, such as um, but when someone or people are actively community, commuting to work, let's say, um, they're really um, improving their cardio, they're getting their steps in. There's also a linked correlation between that and the reduction of um, the 
of uh, general gas emissions. There's also positive health effects, uh, which I which I just said, sorry, <laughs> about um, having your steps in and really like making sure that less people have uh, um, health related um, issues such as asthma, because personally I'm asthmatic and I know that when I am breathing fresh air, when I'm outside, I'm much better than being confined inside. And also my mental health is really improved. The third component, is really that um, we must think of uh, gender equality. Uh, women, non-binary and trans people are facing really specific challenges and those challenges are, are often overlooked um, in the planning process. Um, by example, um, the transit system that uh, prioritizes efficiency um, rather than accessibility, while they can leave women feeling unsafe and vulnerable to harassment. Why is that? Well, it's because of the lack of uh, lighting, poor visibility, and long wait times, by example. And um, trans inclusivity and allyship is really crucial to be um, appropriate for everyone in society. Those people, trans, um, they are facing specific challenges in urban spaces. Uh, it can go from public access to restrooms and go as far as harassment and violence. Um, we, we really need to make um, urban designs that are more gender inclusive, intersectional, and really ability inclusive. And by doing so, um, we can have... Uh, transportation that's really appropriate. Yes, we can have walking and cycling, but we really need to have um, those uh, elements of uh, public transit and like uh, support the fact that we need to design spaces that are welcoming for everyone. So regardless of your ability to, to necessarily move, you need to be able to connect with it and um, have a way to, to make it accessible. So, um, by example, you could have uh, gender neutral restrooms, you can have uh, accessible uh, public transportation and well lit parks and public spaces. And those make a city that's safer for marginalized groups, but they also promote community and connectiveness because everyone's going to be able to equally enjoy um, the fruits of being in a city. Um, the fourth aspect is really that mainly when we think a lot of people, when they think about the city, they really think of gentrification. So that makes a, 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 a stark link to um, economic and social inequalities. And those inequalities, they're a result of factors such as income discrepancies, uneven access to education and healthcare, discrimination, lack of opportunity, and um, specified um, lack of opportunity for upward mobility. And uh, that really impacts people's social capital, which is linked to the previous mentioned um, items. Um, so by doing so, we're really excluding those people from having the benefits of, again, living in the city. Um, so we really want to make sure that we have like a, like this little table is while well, image is presenting. We want to have social engagement for everyone. We want to integrate everyone in the planning of the city. We want to feel safe within the city. It needs to be equitable, so that means that we need to put in place things for everyone to have equal access and make sure to have um, potentially uh, items and other actions to really make it accessible for everyone, regardless of like your background, skin color, etc. Um, and also all those components impact mental health, so we really need to make an inclusive city to foster a sustainable city and community. community. The fifth aspect is really about food security. Um, food security is a critical issue in many urban communities. 
because the lack of access to healthy and affordable foods um, has created food deserts. And those food deserts, there are areas where residents have limited or no access to supermarkets or grocery store that sell fresh fruits, vegetables, and other nutritious foods. And those things, um, that type of food, they really um, impact the people with living within them because they are more likely to suffer from diet-related health problems such as obesity, diabetes, diabetes, sorry, and heart diseases. And by, ad by addition, they may have to rely on convenience stores and fast food chains. And those uh, meals, they're often high in calorie, really salty and highly uh, transformed, which makes it that it's really a low types of uh, foods, low nutrients foods. And um this is obviously not so great. It's not an investment. Not eating well, although you are trying to, but you don't have the funds to do so. Um, it sucks, to put it simply. And also, you really cannot, like, why it's bad, it's because everyone must eat, but not everyone has the means to eat healthy. And it shouldn't be a choice. It should be just a right, a human right. Like you're here, you should have access. Why? Because we do have land. Well, in in Canada, in Montreal, we have vast land. So there is space to do so, but we do need a better planned city and food security is a really important part of that. Um, how are um how is food security kind of uh, minimized um in actuality is that we need to prioritize local food production. We need to reduce food waste. We need to promote ev environmental friendly practices. Um, and we need to create an equitable access to healthy foods for all members of the community at large, um, regardless of their income level. We need an urban design that's, that's going to be really promoting food security. Um, for example, in Montreal, um, I think we are the, we're, kind of uh, pioneers in community gardens in a certain regard. Um, we do have a lot of community gardens and they're taken charge partly by the city, but they're also um, uh, directed as co-ops. So the city puts funds aside, but it's really the citizens that decide exactly how they're going to do it. And it's supposed to be in a demo, um, managed in a democratic fashion. There's also urban farms, um, so we're really going to use underused uh, places to grow food. So it can be on a rooftop, it can be in the backyard, rather than having grass in the lawn, we can also have uh, potager in French, which is like a, a vegetable produce garden. So that can be really interesting. Um, we can also um, like uh, encourage a farmer's market or mobile markets, especially in food deserts, to make sure that everyone has access and that the food is, is uh, affordable. Um, we should also uh, think of zoning policies that promote the development of grocery stores. And we want to minimize big chains because, all, as we all know, big chains buy out smaller ones and it becomes kind of a, bulk, a big bulb of the same owner that has a lot of profit, that makes profit, but he's not a, he's, he or it or she, not uh, discriminating by gender, um, is really just going to do profit and it's not philanthropy. They're not just doing this because it's fun. They're doing this because of profit. It's not about access to food. So we really need to, to think of, of those elements. Um, and by working together to have food security, while well, we can we can have a challenge on land use that's going to be uh, not for that. There's also going to be lesser of an equality and um, we can achieve that security by thinking of um, 
all the many things that I've said previously. Um, but what we need to really remember is that food security is important and it's a basic right that is not that complicated to go into. The sixth item is human ecology. Um, and human ecology is the multidisciplinary field of study that uh, focuses on the interaction between humans and their built environment. Um, one aspect of that relationship is really that urban design um, has a big impact on our environment. Um, and it refers to planning and designing the cities and towns, and, in, and that includes the layout of the buildings, the transportation system, and public spaces. And the way we design our cities and towns has a significant impact on our environment on the positive side and also on a negative one. So we really need to look at both sides. Um, And um, one key principle of sustainable urban design would be to really use and um, go into, sorry, uh, renewable resources, um, use more and more solar and solar energy, and to really minimize or conserve non-renewable um, resources that, such as fossil fuels. Um, we also need. Like I said, more green spaces, parks, gardens, and um, those kind of things to, re to reduce um, heat islands. And um, examples of how um, urban design can be promoted is that uh, the city of uh, Portland in Oregon, they have implemented a number of sustainable urban design principles. And there's one of them that's really um, making sure that the public transport system is amazing. Maybe not as amazing as Japan, but still, I'm a bit biased. But it is shown that uh, Portland has one of the lowest carbon footprint um, as an American city, because they really um, thought of um, the efficiency and accessibility with uh, bike paths of their transport systems. So um, overall, um, ladies, gentlemen, they, them, um, the journey towards uh, sustainable cities, it begins really now. So any action that uh, you think is small is really not small because um, anything is possible. We really just need to be all together and, and to implement change. Um, so we've explored the formula for sustainable cities and communities. And we, well, I focused for you guys <laughs> on certain key elements such as sustainable development, social economy, and food security, as well as human ecology. And I just want to go back and reiterate that sustainable development, it really ensures that, like I said, growth and progress occurs in a way that's going to preserve our environment and the resources for both present and future generations, because it's the foundation upon which we're going to build sustainable cities. Um, social economy, um, it's crucial for creating businesses and organizations that are going to prioritize social and our environmental impacts along um, economic gain. So we're really going to embrace social economy um, and foster equitable and sustainable cities. For, for food security, it's really vital to ensure that everyone has access to healthy and affordable foods. And by addressing this issue, we promote the well-being and mental health, mental health and health, sorry, of um, everyone in the community. And uh, overall, that's how we, again, sustain um, sustainable cities and communities. Um, as for human ecology, it's really to remind us the interdependence of the human and the natural world. And we really need to develop strategies to make sure that the actions we take on nature, um, they're, they're sustainable. So they're not just going to be about selling a product or a service. Uh, really need to preserve it because we want to leave something that's going to be a, a fun to live on for the next uh, generation. And um, 
I hope that you enjoyed my presentation. <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions.